Hello and welcome to Alpha versus Beta, um, or not quite Alpha versus Beta. This is actually a test world I'm using to test out new things in the snapshot. Uh, I'm just on a LAN server right now because I needed extra people to show this off. Uh, but this is a very nice mechanism that I will be adding for 1.5 in the Alpha versus Beta. And what it is is an automatic team balancer. You can press this button and you will automatically be joined to the team with less players or if the teams are currently even it will join you to a random team. Uh, before I go directly into explaining how that all works I'm going to talk a little bit about the new test4 command. Um, I have not seen a lot on this command yet and it is really great especially for PvP games that use teams based on levels and really anything that uses levels for anything. Um, so let's give me a command block. Oh boy. <laughs> I should not talk and type at the same time. It doesn't work out so well. So the basics of the test for command is, well, the basic thing that I like about it is test for at A. What that does is it counts the number of players in the world. That sounds simple enough, but it's really powerful when combined with all of the featuring, with the filtering features that are built into the targeting of command blocks. So as you can see right now, it tells me there's two players, me and Adobe. Um, obviously, you can also add filters to it. So if you want to test for only people of level three then you do that and you press the button and there's nobody with three levels right now so let's give Adobe three levels and then we'll hit that now there's one and we can give me three levels and there's two alright that's pretty simple um, unfortunately as you can see you have to send a redstone signal to the command block to update the output it does not automatically update when somebody gets new levels or when somebody gets in range of it. So as of right now, we need to update it somehow. Um, for many things, you'll just be able to use a button to update that. Um, sometimes you want it to be updating constantly. And for that, there's another new thing that's pretty nice. Oh, well, it's not as new, but there's these um, hopper clocks. Basically, hoppers give an output when they have an item in them. What am I doing? <laughs> um, so if you have two hoppers going into each other, they just trade this item back and forth really quickly. And so that gives a constant tick. And so that will constantly update this command block. So you'll see if I take away my levels, almost right away, this one turns off because it's gone down to one person at three levels. So that's really handy. Um, one great use for this is for counting the number of people on the team. Um, I already have this basically set up. Um, so we're going to have command blocks there. And then, then we need our little clock. Uh, that did not get set up right. <laughs> um, so to, in order to do this, you just put one one hopper down, and you hold shift and put the other one facing into it, break the first one, and put the other one there, and you're all set. So we can get this started. Um, command blocks don't say anything right now, so it's not going to count anything. But we're going to use the alpha versus beta levels here. If you don't quite realize why the way why they are the levels they are, if you look at them long enough, maybe you'll figure it out. Um, unfortunately, the default Minecraft script does not display it the best way. So that'll test for red team. And then let's just copy that and paste it. Edit for blue team. There we go. So right now there's nobody on any teams. If we give me... Um, 
put me on red team and I screwed that up somehow. Oh, experience. <laughs> Gotta put that all there. That's very important. See, there we go. So all of that brings us to, um, well, not quite to this yet. There's one other thing that is very useful to do with these, and that is to compare them. So if you have this one, which is, actually, I'm just going to copy these. <laughs> so this one is counting the number of people on red team. And then we'll do another one. That's counting the number of people on blue team. So if you haven't already figured it out, what this is going to do is put out a signal strength equal to the number of people on red team. This will put one that's equal to the number of people on blue team. Because the way comparators work, if the signal coming in from the side is greater than the signal coming in from here, the source, then it will not put any output out. So the way this works is if there's more people on red team than blue team, we're not going to get a signal here. So how do you use that? Well, that is this monstrosity. Um, it's changed a bit from when I did a live stream on it on patch day, or not patch day, but snapshot day, because I realized a couple of flaws, but now I think it works perfectly, which means it's going to break during this video. <laughs> So, the basics of it are you have to stand on that green block. That's just because I have the targeting set up. Um, right now, it's not actually putting people on um, teams. It's just going to say an output to chat because that's a little easier to see. So, um, press the button. And Adobe joins blue team. Because I'm already on red team, it's going to try to even out the teams. And it will put them on blue. Um, I should probably be looking above here and the, the way it works you'll see is this one is obviously counting the number of people on red team so that's putting an output of one which is locking this one um, which means there's no output to this block so this one is not locked and so we get this one which is join blue on the other side, we have this output going through here. Because there's less players on blue team, this is not getting locked. Um, right now it's zero, so it's not putting out anything here. But if this were one and this were two, it would be the same, only this one would be lit and this would still be giving out power. So this puts power through here, which locks this one, which means you don't join red team. Additionally, there's this other extra thing here which shows um, you can see this torch is on and that is turning on this repeater which is locking this the way that works is um, what this is doing basically is locking off the if teams are random line or not if teams are random if teams are even line which gives a random team um, so the way the random team works is it's just a water source bud switch randomizer thingy um, that, um, who designed that? It's uh, CodeCrafted, I think, was the original designer of this bud or randomizer that uses a bud switch, which I'm not happy about because I hate bud switches, but we'll see. If Mojang re removes this one, I'll figure out another way to do random. Um, if they do remove bud switches, I think there's a pretty good chance they'll add randomizers. Um, just because that seems like a thing they might do with the redstone update, but we'll see. Anyways, that's what this is. So this is a randomizer. It gives either random red or that's not the right block, random blue. So I'll show you what it looks like when teams are even. Um, let's just join Adobe to blue team. Okay. Um, now, built into this is a thing that removes your level before you 
before the rest of the thing runs so we obviously don't want that to run um, it's targeted to this green block so we're just going to stay away from that so we can see what it looks like with even teams so we press that and we get random red as our result and if we press it again this time we get random blue and random red random red random blue so yeah it's reasonably random <laughs> um, so that is the basics of that now one of the things that I had to add last minute today I actually started recording this video before I realized it was a problem um, is accounting for the case of well I'm not thinking of when there is no one on any team yet um, the way because of the way this works um, because if there's zero for each side this is gonna put out zero um, it's not putting out anything so it's not gonna lock these so in order for this to work when there's nobody on any team there has to be this extra thing down here which you can't really see very well but let's see if I can show this without breaking it there's this other system down here these also test for again so these each put out a signal here um, and what these do is if if they don't put out any signal, then um, then uh, this will be off. This line down here will be off, which will turn this torch on, which powers this, which will lock these, which allows the randomizer to go and be the only thing that goes. So that is the basics of how it works. Um, it might sound complicated it is kind of complicated but it's very simple to use 